A 20 to 60 times magnification spotting scope is very powerful, showing you wildlife up close to clearly seeing objects several miles away. Stay tuned for a rundown of just how close and how far away this scope can see. Let's check out some wildlife. Distances are in the lower left corner and zoom factor in the lower right. The distances will increase as we go along. This muskrat wasn't far away, swimming near an overlooked platform. A group of eastern bluebirds were hanging out in this tree. This one still looks small at 20x, but is easier to identify at 60x. One moved to another perch about the same distance away. At this range, the phone's autofocus was still able to lock onto the bluebird. A great blue heron slowly waded through this wetland pond before snatching a very large fish and having dinner. An adult bald eagle viewed from across a river. A still image showing a group of killdeer walking around in a wetland area. From a distance, I was pretty sure this was a bald eagle. Turns out I was right. Several white and one brown object could be seen on the far side of this pond. The brown one turned out to be a juvenile bald eagle, 300 yards away. The white objects were great egrets, about the same distance. Another great blue heron, this time it's an action shot. It was a cloudy, misty type of day, so the image clarity was not great. Several types of waterfowl are hanging out at this wetland. At the back end was a white dot. It was still small on my DSLR camera at 250 millimeters. The spotting scope revealed it to be a Canada goose. These birds were only blips on a pole when looking at them with the naked eye. They turned out to be a pair of red-tailed hawks using a hawk perch 730 yards away. I recently went out and searched for some distant objects. On day one, I spotted a cell tower and a red dot on a nearby hill. The red dot turned out to be a barn. That yard distance translates to 2.36 miles. Zooming in at 30x and it's obvious that there is also a power transmission tower behind this barn. Another look at 60x. On the same hill, here's the cell tower. It's amazing how big it looks even at 20x. The various elements at the top of the tower become easier to pick out at 30x. Zooming into 60x, atmospheric distortions are becoming more noticeable, and it doesn't even have to be hot for this to happen. The temperature was 54 degrees Fahrenheit, or 13 degrees Celsius. Wind has a bigger impact the more you zoom in. Even a moderate breeze will cause image shake. Action shots are more difficult to shoot with such high-powered optics. The type and quality of the tripod head will also affect the results. It's hard to keep the jet in the center of the frame at full magnification. On day two, while scanning a different hill, this small round object peeked out. It's a water tower. At 20x, it's obvious there's something written on the tower, and there's another object next to it. 
It's getting clearer at 30x and obvious what it says at 60x. Having an overcast sky can be an advantage. The water tower is evenly lit with no harsh shadows and good contrast. When I returned the next day, it was sunny and the visibility was not as good. There was also a strong breeze. The writing was harder to read under these conditions. On day four, the sun was out and it was warm with a temperature of 73 degrees Fahrenheit or 23 degrees Celsius. Heat distortions in the sun angle made for a hazy and distorted look to this cell tower. Over to the right, Something round was peeking over the hill, and surprise, it's another water tower. And just like the cell tower, the image quality was poor. On day five, at a different location, this also turned out to be another water tower, even farther away than the others. It was another overcast day with the tower evenly lit. A flock of American crows are flying through the shot. Well, I hope you found that impressive. To learn more about spotting scope settings and how to take pictures of the moon, check out the next video in the upper right corner. I'll see you there.